Okay, welcome back. So let's move to the next case. So as you go in the web page, you see here that you, you, you have the case. Okay, so this is basically the same setup that we have done, but with passive scatters. Okay, so here with disabled energy, we have the passive scatter. So let's move here. Okay, so you have the solution here. I will set up using the previous case. So it's, you were following the previous one with adaptive mesh refinement. Okay, go back to the original mesh. Okay, so I don't want to use that one. So in my case, I save it, my case one. Okay. Okay, so we're done here. And just to verify, so this is the original mesh. So we want to do the same setup, okay? But remember that we don't want to use now the energy, okay? So disable this, okay? I disable the energy and as you go here, okay, you have your water, you don't have all the all the other constant and everything, okay? Because you disable the, the energy. And at this point, what we want to do is that in this inlet, I want to add a passive scatter and here another passive scatter. It's pretty much will be like temperature, but in temperature we have the diffusion coefficient. Here will be the same, but I will put it to zero, the diffusion coefficient. So to add uh passive scatter okay resolve the the general transport equation okay so when you put to zero diffusion coefficient you are elim eliminating that Laplacian coefficient later when, when we address the final, final volume lecture a little bit going to show you the, those equations you you know which what equations we are talking about so but you go here in parameters customization and see here that you have user defined scatters here's where you define that so create a new one new and what I want to do, I want to create two, okay? Because I want to have a scatter here, another scatter here, kind of the cold and hot water, okay? So you have there and see that it creates these two. And now here you can give it a different name, but also you can uh, set this definition. Here again, invite you to go to, to, to the help to know what, what, what we're de dealing here with this, but these default options, these are okay. Okay, you have this one, you have your diff your user scatter, you have new equations. So remember, new equations requires boundary conditions, initial conditions, set and physical properties. Okay, so as you go back now to material, okay, see here that now here, you have access to the diffusivity coefficient of those new equations. So here you can Define it for, 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 for every single equation. So see that passive scalar one, U, UDS one, you have this coefficient. I want to set it to zero and this one to zero as well. I don't want diffusion. It will be a clear, sharp interface, pure convection to put it like that. So you define that. Okay, nothing else to do. Now as you go here in boundary conditions, see that at the inlet, as you go into inlet, See that now you have access to a new tab, UDS, user defined scatter. Previously we have the thermal, we disabled thermal, and now here is where you specify what you what you have here. So in the inlet one, I want this one. So usually these scatters are bounded is concentration between zero and one. Okay, zero you don't have anything, one maximum concentration. Okay. So see that here U, UDS zero is centering, this is zero, okay? And here you <coughs> you can specify the value, uh, the boundary condition. So in this case, I want to specify, okay, see that I want to specify user-defined boundary condition is a DD slash boundary condition, okay? So I have one and zero, okay? Be careful there. Then for inlet two, we do something similar. I want to specify the value, the slash boundary condition here, apply. So here you have one. And then at the outlet, you also need to specify that. Okay, so as you go here, specify flux is a Newman boundary condition. So you put it to zero, it's gradient normal to this boundary. So it's like extrapolate the values, leave it like that. Okay, and remember that at the walls also, this one will give you access to some models. Also, you can model, for instance, you can put reactions to the wall using this. So this can become uh, really, really tricky. So again, you use a Newman there, okay? So it will take the same value that you have 
in the flow, okay? So you specify that, nothing else to do here, everything remains standard. Here, now when you go here, see that you have two new equations. Again, these two new equations, you need to define how to solve it. Again, it's the same idea. As you want to resolve that clear interface, you need to go second order accuracy, okay? So put it there, here is a standard, nothing to add here. So for instance, if you want to compute that, you should define a scalar. So see previously, we have temperature. So it's not any more temperature because that doesn't exist anymore. What I can do is custom field function, user defined scalar, and you can compute the that one there. So let me go here. So, or we can erase it. Let me erase this one that is not in use anymore. Okay, it is applied here. So also be careful here. You can, you will need to delete it here as well and delete here okay so let me create a new one and i want the facet average and you have the outlet and in the outlet i want to compute the outage report to plot you can compute it it's zero because you don't have anything it's okay and that's all let's suppose you want to put for a second one in you can put it as well Okay, so initialize as usual. Let me initialize here. Okay, and now we can run. So before running, also let me save. So let me call it UDS. And now press start and see that it's running the same way. Okay, but see that now you have two additional equations for those passive scatter equations. See that here you have your washer stresses, your Y plus maximum, the mass flow, and here you have this. So see here that they're computing the, the average value of the outlet. Okay, so the computation is done, and now we can go here. You have the velocity, and to access the user-defined scalar, you have it here. So see here that one, zero. So you choose the other one, one zero and see that this is a clear interface so by setting this value here to see the the diffusion coefficient this should be a very see that for both diffusion coefficient is zero okay this should be a clear interface okay like water and air okay you have that interface a chart interface okay so now here is we use uh the uh ductus refinement this one we should get a better resolution okay so let's do that and let me add an a, a, a mesh refinement there okay so remember that you go here so you registers and i want field variable so see that you can access everything let me put the scatter one and cells in range okay so yes, yeah, so cells and range community. So it's telling you that you have this. And so let me put cells and range between this and this. So you display this and see that it's tagging all that. Okay. So something very important also remember that this quantity is bounded between zero and one. So sometimes you can have some unboundedness. So see the, this one is becoming a little bit negative. So it's a small value, it's not a problem. But I know that, that this unboundedness is due to meshing likely here we're giving problems but it's a small value okay you can identify these values okay but you see that for instance the maximum value becomes like 10 that is a problem okay so this is a strictly bounded quantity between zero and one and positive bounded okay but these are something that so numerical methods produce garbage so on this kind of garbage we can live with this small value okay so we tag the cells now i can refine there and let me see the new mesh Okay, so I see that the new mesh that you have. So if I plot here, so let me save this image here. So probably now we're going to see better the influence of this refinement. Save and let me save and the desktop. Desktop. F1. Save that. Okay, so let me compute now. So it restart. I don't need to restart, so it will interpolate solution and then keep computing. Go here and see now 
that is clearly a thing. I hope you see the difference now. So now in this case where we have that chart interface, so see that by having a finer mesh, you have a sharper interface. So let me add another refinement level there. So if I go here, but, 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 let me add here, refine again. Okay, so this one will be much, much better. Calculate. So usually the, the, this is very efficient, as I mentioned, when you have shockwave for those doing aerospace applications and shockwave works great. Okay, to capture shockwave. So see that now this is very, very well resolved. Okay, so if I go back and bring back this image, so see the difference. Okay, so quartz mesh, much, much finer mesh. Okay, so I know that this one should be a sharp interface, okay, between zero and one, okay? This is the theory, later we, we will address a little bit this. So this is it, okay? So for instance, just to show you, again, in this case, probably here is clearly to see the, the influence of numerical dissipation. So if I go here, and if I run this case, using first order of wind, you're going to see clear, we're going to see numerical diffusion because this wind is too diffusive, well, well was quite fast, that's it. Okay, see that now it's evident the, the, the diffusion here, okay? And also just let me now go back to second order, okay? So this is the problem between first and second order. So first order are very stable, they never diverge, but they are too diffuse. Instead, second order or more, they're accurate, but unique to control because they can become oscillatory. Uh, let me run again so starting converge if i plot again here you see that finer there so let me show you also let me change the diffusion the, the coefficient as you go here and you change this one let me put uh i have so this one if i put yeah one that that, that is a kind of a large value Okay, so I put diffusion coefficient one for bus. Let's, let's see what happens if I run now. Now there is diffusion, okay. So see what happens when you add diffusion. So this is now physical diffusion. This is not numerical. So this is the effect of diffusion, okay. So this is when, I, and when we're talking in turbulence, when later when we're going to deal and look at the uh, at the object of turbulent kinetic energy, random stress, turbulence diffusion is this one, okay. How the turbulent kinetic energy, the, flu, the fluctuations or the eddies, how they diffuse in the domain, okay. And the same with thermal diffusion, okay, temperature, and you will have this diffusion of temperature in your domain. Uh, again, the, this post-processing that we did previously, nothing changed, so you will have access to all these quantities, you can plot along lines, okay, there, there is nothing different, okay. So I think this is all, okay, for this case, as you see, we, we so far in these three simple cases that we have done so far, we have explored black bands concept in such a simple geometry. So our next tutorial, tutorial four, will be this same geometry, but now we go 3D. Okay, so I will show you how to do this geometry using the same modeler and space cleanse and then do the meshing, and I will do acetate fast. I'm not going to do all this stuff, you know how to do it, so it's up to you. So that will be an, our next case. So that's all for the moment. Thank you for the attention and see you next tutorial. Bye.